back to our Q&A series. I'm your host, Dr. Bo Harstein, and today our experts will be talking about Select Sire's new index, Herd Health Profit Dollars. Joining me for today's discussion is Jeff Ziegler, the Vice President of Dairy Cattle Breeding here at Select Sires, as well as Bruce Smith, the District Sales Manager at COBA Select Sires. Jeff, Bruce, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having us. Thanks for having me here as well. Yeah. Let's get started with our first question about herd health profit dollars. Jeff, why a new index? There's many on the market. Um, and why has Select Sires created herd health profit dollars specifically? Great question, Bo. And, and Select Sires has always prided ourselves in history to be unique, uh, to be a genetic leader, a genetic provider, not only for our customers, but the industry in its, in its entirety. Uh, and we really felt it was perfect timing to incorporate some additional emphasis on traits that our customers and our representatives like Bruce uh, have been telling us that, that are important to their future and their careers. And customers do really see the change that's happening in longevity and health and the quick in the genetic world response that they can have to that. And so there is needed need for more emphasis in those traits. Definitely, definitely. More to add, Jeff? Um, yeah, is that right now the industry has a just a plethora of genetic opportunities for our customers mm -hmm. and maybe more data and bulls than they can put their minds around. Uh, so we need to find our ways to pull our, uh, our bulls out of the mass and create some uniquenesses and some economic driving differences and uh, some additional emphasis that we'll talk about hopefully does that. This slide hopefully represents as the industry has many bulls to select from, many data points on each of those bulls, and it's just more an overwhelming task to try to find reasons to utilize and, and choose. And also it's important for us to pull our bulls out of those masses and, and show uniquenesses from an economic standpoint uh -huh. of why they're important to use and to better those, our customers' careers with. Um, so well over 4,000 of those to pick from, and obviously that's too many. But one of those economic drivers uh, is net merit. It's been around for a long period of time, clear back in the 70s when it started. As you can see on the slide here, it was just simply a, a, uh, a milk and fat um, driver at that point in time. But it's evolved over time as more data has become available. It's evolved into an economic index that incorporates all the new data that, are, that Dairyman provide the industry. Um, and it's, it's done in a way uh, through research that has validation and, and we've utilized it. But at the same time, it's really been focused around making cows live longer. Uh -huh. What makes a cow live longer? Um, and what we have been told by folks like Bruce, folks like customers that we visit with as well, is that uh, productive life is important without question. But maybe the, the direction of some of the traits that have been chosen here of recent don't emphasize some of those traits as strongly as we think they should to be ahead of the runner. So we say, we want to skate to where the puck's going to be. And we think we have some ideas and concepts to help us do that. Um, the, the index is going to change actually here in August. Uh, it's shown there where residual feed index is going to be incorporated into the, the uh, net merit index. But uh, that's not the only thing we think would be a good adjustment because some stories like Bruce has shared with us in the past uh, are really important to make sure we're throwing ahead instead of looking back. That's all right. Customers are looking for the improvement and the index is a sorting tool, but, the, but to narrow it down um, without a custom index to something that is driving them where they see the improvement in mastitis um, as an example, that's what they're looking for. Great, great. So. Indexes are made to keep things simple and to put uh, traits in their proper perspective. Uh, Net Merit does that. Um, other indexes do that. And these are the different national indexes that have been utilized over time, the weightings of the different traits that go into those indexes. So Bruce, how do you take that slide and take that information and, and direct your customers to what's important for them? Well, there, there's a combination of both because everybody has their opinions of their ideal animal that they're trying to breed for. And so some of them will fit into one of those indexes themselves better. There is also an educational opportunity there to influence, have some level of influence to lead them 
maybe a way that they think they need to improve that is not maybe as highly weighted in one of the other indexes that they have been more using, utilizing more so than than the direction they're trying to go. Mm-hmm. Great. That makes sense. And, and as the, the circles represent, there's where some real differences are amongst the, uh, we call the bigger indexes that are used, your TPI, your net merit, your Daryl Wellness Profit Dollars, um, or mastitis and confirmation is probably the the two areas that uh, create a lot of discussion on farm as far as what's best for them. They absolutely do. And, and they see the results of selecting for mastitis and people still like to look at good looking cattle. Sure. For sure. For sure. Well, let's, let's, let's have some fun. Okay. Let's, let's look at the industry that uh, builds genetics, just like the, the great company of select sires. We have competitors that do similar things, maybe in a different way, but let's look at results. Um, can't hide from facts, as my mother always said, facts are facts. Jeff, you were out too late last night. She was right. <laughs> Anyhow, um, you look at the top 10 bulls of all the studs at the April evaluation and rank those, or excuse me, average the top 10 of those, each of those studs for their top 10 bulls. So Bruce, there's the information. There's four studs li- listed there. Their top 10, 10 averages of the top 10 bulls. What do you tell a customer? If we're going to select for net merit, we're going to select for B because he's going to have the highest dollar improvement values um, of that group of studs in this case today. Okay. And that's why Bruce is one of our leading representatives. He can do math. But um, let's add more to the story because there's always more to a story. It doesn't matter what discussion point you're talking about. So let's add some fertility to net merit. In other words, look at the same group of bulls. Look at the genetic average of those top 10 um, and create some differences here. And how do you handle this information? Oftentimes that comes back to a question to the customer, but what's their emphasis? And it starts to bring in some doubt. Bull E is beat bull. Stud B is not the easy winner necessarily if they need to make some improvements on DPR, but you do still have to at some level remember it is an economic index. Mm -hmm. Great, great. Well, let's let's add to the story, and we've, we've talked about cows need to live longer. We've talked about precision breeding is a, is a common word used today in the industry. What makes a cow live longer? Well, many things, but if you look at productive life solely and look at the average of those top 10 bulls, again, by stud, it starts to pull the thing apart just a little further, and good, bad, or indifferent, uh, this is what the information shows. Absolutely, and it, it just goes to the difference of balance versus, uh, you know, an individual index and, and using the index as a sorting tool, but working down from there at times. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, Bo's a research guy, right? Research guys are never satisfied with this, this an answer. They want to know beyond the answer, right? Sure. Yeah. Well, let's, let's take it further, Bo, just for fun, because you're here in the audience with us today. But let's add utter composite. Uh, as well, that select sires always pride themselves on having uh, genetics that make good uttered cattle. Um, that's never really going to change, I don't think, no matter what index we're looking at. But it really doesn't probably define any of the studs terribly different. I think AI says you better have good uttered animals or they're not going to uh, be of interest. But fertility, even further above and beyond semen fertility, that Bo knows way more about than we do. but. Genetically, we know that you better have cows that breed back, heifers that can breed as well. Um, And cow conception rate, heifer conception rate is part of that process. Here's where it starts to pull the thing either further apart or maybe muddies the water. We're not sure which it is, but Bruce, how would you uh, uh, talk to our customers about this information? So certainly if they have a need or an emphasis on longevity and fertility, then it starts to strongly point you to stud A. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I heard you say uh, earlier in a, com- a statement, mastitis control. Uh, hopefully everyone has seen mastitis resistant pro that was launched here recently. Uh, it's taken off very well with three indicators for mastitis. Why not uh, incorporate that in some fashion? So let's add mastitis control to this same group of bulls we've talked about from the previous slides. Um, and this is where the separation starts to occur when you look at all the traits and where select sires has emphasized all the traits. 
Uh, in fact, we started a process back in 2018, really emphasizing some of the traits that are listed here, um, above and beyond what an index tells us. And because of that, we might not leave the industry for a particular index, but when you start to break it down, the components of the index and look at the bulls represented, hopefully this shows you the balanced approach that we're trying to strive for. It, it does, and that's what most customers ask, is that kind of balance. I like that. It tells a really nice story when you put all that comparison together. Great. And the fact that they're real numbers is what makes it impressive. Great. So we brought up traits like mastitis several times already, but can you two break down a little further what traits specifically have gone into herd health profit dollars? Right, and like I said, an index is made uh, to simplify some complicated data points and, and to make Bruce's job a little easier because Bruce, how many bulls you say you have in your truck at any one point in time? At any one point, it's over 400 different bulls. Okay, 400 different bulls and how many different customers? Several hundred. Okay, well, <laughs> he's that's why he doesn't sleep as well at night. But uh, a lot going on. A lot of decisions are getting made each and every day. We tried to simplify the, this entire discussion uh, with herd health profit dollars, and this is what the index actually uh, looks like. How it's broken out by traits, the weighting of those traits as well, um, the the difference of courses, the mastitis and, and the fertility that we've discussed earlier are important to. Our future, we think it's very important to our customer's future, and maybe not the current indexes give us all those directional tools uh, in a balanced approach, I should mention, like HHP. Yeah. And that really shows the balance of just all aspects going in to make a, a balanced approach to make a really good count towards the future. Great. And as you can see, we do have feed saved. Uh, that's part of the newness that's coming here in August. Uh, we've had uh, Feed Pro actually is part of our designation platform for several years now. So again, that was our way to, to look ahead and develop something that'll start us heading down the right path. Uh, now Feed Saved is an industry evaluation that'll do that. So uh, again, it just shows you that we're always trying to look ahead, uh, not just uh, uh, continue on with what the industry is utilizing today. Right. So when you compare all these indexes, there's what happens. Um, you see some differences there the circled areas of the, the points that we've really emphasized here today um, that maybe one individual index doesn't give as strongly uh, as the HHP does as a, in a combined effort. Yep, and so that is really demonstrating how herd health profit dollars compare to the other indexes on the market right now. Great, mm -hmm. right, and it was, it, it's not our objective is to create, is to, to recreate the wheel. I mean, if we have an index that works and it does what we, all what we need it to do, why do we do this? Well, we said those work, but is it enough? Uh, because not everybody was maybe fully satisfied with net merit or not everyone was fully satisfied with dairy wellness profit or TPI or cheese merit or whatever the case may be. Uh, we just have always pride ourselves at select to make sure we have bulls that fits lots of desires because Bruce has all those customers that want something unique and different but they want to succeed with all of them. So sure. we got to create those kinds. With multiple customers, we can create a custom index per customer, but we can also, with the variety of choices here, um, from TPI to net merit dollars to herd health profit dollars today, I can fit most customers into something there before having to go individually to a custom index. And anything we do today, we try to do it from an economic standpoint. It better make some money at the end of the day for the people that utilize our product line. So when you incorporate net merit and add to it some additional mastitis control that we've emphasized, which again is a huge detrimental cost to an area today, um, you can see that Select Sires has a larger portfolio of those types of bulls than any other stud. Uh, but again, that was by design. So it started back in 2018. Started with board discussions, Sarah committee discussions, and honestly came from the field from people just like yourself, Bruce, and said, what more can you do to make us different from our competitors and make a money doing it? We're always asking you to stay progressive and keep yeah. us on top. Yeah. So I, I love the story that's been told as to why Herd Health Profit Dollars has, you know, been generated, how we expect customers to start using it and how it will help in the, help them. But as we wrap up, I'll transition to my last question, and that's related to uh, 
Jeff, you and the Sire team, how has herd health profit dollars influenced Sire acquisition and development? Sure. Um, it's, it's added to a large arsenal of tools we already have uh, that we want to be successful in. And, and we're not singular focused. We can't be. Uh, we sell many million units of semen every year. The company has grown like a weed today. And so to reach these new customers that have something that maybe we're not, don't have today, we better be expanding our portfolio. So we look at their wellness profit. We have a lot of bulls that, that are succeeding in that right now and more to come. Wellness trait dollars as well from Zoetis. Cheese merits probably a growing index that we've incorporated here at recent with a lot of bulls that are extreme for cheese. Uh, we talked about fertility and mastitis control. Never in our history have we had the bulls of this bat, these genetic values, and this many, I should say, but with a variation of pedigrees as well. Um, reduced stature. We talk about feed pro in the past, and we talk about feed safe today. One of those main drivers of that is the size of a cow. A whole discussion point we could spend the next half hour on what's what's the best size of a For cow. Sure. Um, but we got to have some of these. So we have more of these than we've ever had in the past. Um, caseins are a huge part of uh, Bruce and his colleagues are telling us, you know, having that casein the right way just adds to the reason for that customer to say yes instead of say no. Uh, we don't like to hear no. That's not a, a fun answer to get. No. And of course, a, a, an economic, or excuse me, a, a breed association driver like TPI um, will continue to have value. And so we still have a, huge number of bulls, like 3,000 is seems like a mark that it's hard to do eclipse, but we now have 200 of those. And Bruce, this was, this is for you. Uh -huh. This is that smorgasbord that, to fill those 400 bulls. And it might be five or 600 in, you, in time to come, which you might not want the inventory problem that that causes, but uh, this is, this is creating that variation you're asking for. We always need variation. As my predecessor said, when I first started, we need a bull for every driveway that we come by so we've got something we always have we continue to have a bowl for every place we go excellent I, yeah i really i really like that and with that that concludes the question that i had for you guys today on herd health profit dollars and to wrap up the conversation is there anything that you'd like to add um we just hope you you see the reasons behind it this wasn't a, a marketing gimmick this was a a directional um, need that we felt genetically we could be the vocal point of the industry on. We think the industry will head more this way in years to come, but why not be that, uh, that, that, that driver of the bus that says, this is where we're going, folks. Jump aboard. We're going to make you money in the process. Um, and hopefully you can see why. It makes sense. Makes and, sense. and customers are seeing it, and this is providing options for them to get to those goals. Perfect. Perfect. And with that, Jeff? Bruce, thank you so much for joining us today. We appreciate the discussion we've had and the opportunity to learn more about the new Herd Health Profit Dollars Index. Thank you. Thanks, Bo. And thank all of you for joining us for today's discussion and Q&A session. Stay tuned as we announce future Q&A topics and be sure to send us your questions beforehand. We'll talk to you again soon.